Vega is developing new generation of display eyewear for augmented reality, virtual reality applications, just broad based display eyewear. But unlike other solutions, all other solutions, we're able to deliver the highest performance uh, display for lightweight, stylish glasses. Um, our solution is uh, quite different than conventional approaches. It's a combination of modern uh, disposable smart contact lenses with eyewear. And I'll explain a little later uh, why we've taken that approach. Um, and as much as we have a very broad and large AR VR market available to us, we're going to market with solutions for patients and specifically for the visually impaired. And again, I'll lay out how that works. Here's our usual disclaimer. Here's our product, and if you think about the uh, traditional virtual reality headset or box that's available today, this, uh, this is very different. Uh, not only does it appear different, it's light, stylish, conventional, but it also delivers on those seven critical factors that I've listed above. Uh, just the first two, to deliver both a panoramic, highest resolution, high performance display from lightweight glasses has been unobtainable and will continue to be unobtainable. Uh, unobtainable in our view. I'll play a video that explains why we use a combination contact lens and glasses, and uh, and then we'll proceed Vega on to talk about understood. our first application. The world needed a human-friendly digital interface without any trade-offs. That is why they created Immacula, a stylish, lightweight, and discreet digital display eyewear solution. Immacula's patented retina technology. Scott, you're is probably going to edit this, but are you not getting audio? With advanced OLED I'm getting audio. mounted into designer glasses. The contact lenses are made from the latest generation gas permeable silicon technology and can include your regular prescription for the best viewing experience. This pivotal technology uses a lenslet mounted on top of a specially constructed polarizing filter. This combination of embedded optics and nanotechnology polarizers are engineered to optically focus the background and foreground, allowing simultaneous focusing of the real world and the digital content from the near-eye micro displays mounted onto designer glasses. This combination of lenses and glasses delivers a substantially greater field of view than any other AR glasses on the market today and is positioned to be the first human-friendly merging of the digital and real world. Seeing really is believing. See beyond. Very cool. So I mentioned that what we'd like to do is uh, offer great support, great benefit to some 10 million worldwide vision impaired and legally blind. And from there, we'll leverage into other applications for other patient groups, hearing, cognitive, et cetera. But vision is incredibly important. It's 80% of what we, we perceive in the world around us. Perfect vision, as, you, as we know, is 20-20 vision. If you're visually impaired, your vision is four times worse, 2070. If you're legally blind, it's 10 times worse. Uh, so we have a, a huge community of visually impaired globally and I'll describe how uh, we can have such a great impact right out of the gate. On the left-hand side is your traditional solution for these, uh, these patients. Uh, obviously a bulky, cumbersome, non-social, non-mobile. The patients are just, just absolutely desire and need the right-hand side. Um, I'll go quickly through this, but I'll make a simple uh, statement that traditionally you offer lenses. Uh, you offer prescription lenses with glasses, contact lenses to improve your vision. By offering our combination of contact lenses with a prescription plus a display inside the glasses, that's how all the magic happens. This is probably the most important slide. Uh, about a year and a half ago, we had tested our glasses and lens solution by this independent group at Ohio State University. And they took uh, those with severe visually impairment and legally blind patients and had them simply wear our contact lens and glasses and view their world. Their average uh, vision measured beforehand was 2115, which means six times, five or six times worse than a person with 2020. By wearing our lenses and glasses, they were immediately restored to 2020 vision in the distance, 2021 vision, 2020 vision for reading, reading a tablet, smartphone, et cetera. So we took, and I'll read it down below, Innovega's contact lenses and glasses provided visually impaired patients and legally blind patients with 2020 vision at distance and near. It's not been done before. 
we achieve it through our lens and normal glasses combination. And this is why it works because typical uh, solutions will provide you with a tiny view of the world. Ours provide you with a, provides the patient with a large view of the world, a panoramic view, and it becomes functional. Again, traditional solutions with a small view of the world, ours with a full view of the world, recognizing faces, reading signs, et cetera. Um, every contact lens needs an FDA approval. We're in the final phase of that uh, approval process. We're in phase three specifically, and there's a couple of different parts to it. But as you can see on this, uh, this chart, we've moved through several years of FDA uh, 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 testing successfully. Here's our team uh, on the left-hand side. I'm the technology person. I've started five, six companies, sold several companies, taken several companies public. Uh, I love doing this. Dr. Legerton in the center, he's our uh, optometrist, low vision expert, um, inventor, uh, over 100 patents filed, and entrepreneur. And on the far right, we have uh, Jay Marsh, who's our brilliant systems engineer, who's juggling across all of these engineering disciplines for the contact lens and the glasses. Here's wrapping it up. Um, you know, we have about 10 million uh, visually impaired patients, just an enormously powerful market where we deliver such good and such value out of the gate um, and then leverage into other patient markets, other vertical markets, and then of course, broad-based consumer markets. Our team has done this many times before, very patent rich. We've we filed some 50 patents in the US and international. We know how to deliver. We've delivered on about $6 million of government contracts. We've got partnership discussions underway with lens and uh, glasses partners to leverage uh, the platform. We've raised about $15 million and most important, about 3 million from strategic investors and a million dollars from a party that would uh, work with us uh, and take us into this space. Discussions ongoing, but all very promising. Just opened a $15 million online public offering, a Regulation A public offering with Seed Invest, and uh, we've raised already about $2.5 million as we, uh, as we move through that. And we've got about 1,000 shareholders, so please join us. So this is super interesting, and I'll, I'll tell you this. like, So when you talked about 10, uh, 10 million as your kind of launch uh, potential customer base, that's US, right? It, it's about 4 million in the US and, and we extrapolate to about 10 million uh, across the world. Now that's just the here, the, the vision impaired, legally blind. Um, I think it'd be more than that, to be honest. So, I would have thought it'd be more. Yeah, you know, you're absolutely right that, that we're just being conservative. We've got about 250 million people who are uh, vision impaired across the world or or blind. Uh, and we collect them down. Our family, so, you know, yeah, <laughs> and, and that's interesting because everyone is someone in the family, particularly grandparents whose vision uh, is failing. And so it, it touches it touches a lot of us. So we take the 250 million and we call it down to 10 million and we call it down to 5 million and 2 million. And we're just targeting, it's just marketing, targeting where we're going to go with the first product. So we hit the ground running. What do you hope that the customer, the initial products, like that kind of perfect storm customer product fit, uh, what should their experience be? What Obviously you showed in the numbers, uh, much better vision and all this, but what is the actual experience? What do they see through the glasses? How does it, uh, how does it work? Because I feel like, uh, for people who are listening to this, they're going to be like, oh, snap spectacles. And it's like, uh, we're playing different games. Yeah, it really depends. Uh, let, let me pick the vision impaired specifically. 80% of those with vision impairment, what they need is, is a, a magnification of their world. So if you take their world that they're looking at and you magnify it by 20 times, take that three inch screen on a smartphone and you make it a 30 inch screen, they will start to recognize, they will have their vision restored. And so uh, what we do is we take glasses, we take a tiny cell phone camera, we embed it in the glasses, it looks out to the world, it magnifies the world as they need it. Everybody has their own prescription, five times, 10 times, 20 times, and then plays it back into a display, which they see. So a person who's visually impaired, legally blind, they're not going to want to look at their world if it's always out of focus. And if they're not recognizing and not yeah. reading, not able to use devices. So by using our solution, they immediately have the impact of recognizing recognizing and, and being functional and regaining independence and lifestyle. So that's an example of what a person who's vision impaired uh, gets. They get their vision back. And again, I refer back to the Ohio State University who are stating exactly that. You take a person who's hearing impaired, deaf, same thing. They've lost lifestyle. They've lost their independence. They need help. They can't drive a car. We provide that same facility. And then the broader picture is, as you're saying, yeah, but what about other applications? How is it different? Well, 
the neat thing is it works for VR. You think about VR, which is a traditional box and every VR box is the same. Ours is reduced to a pair of comfortable, lightweight, normal glasses. So the beauty of our system is our lens and glasses uh, uh, function across all of those AR VR applications. And you're gonna see more and more. It's forecast to be a $67 billion market four years from now. So it's hitting hard. I I 100% believe it. You know, this obviously is apples and oranges, but like I mentioned spectacles, I thought it was a really cool advancement. I, I got to try out Google Glasses when they first came out, and I thought the, the concept was there. Right. Um, in their iteration at the time, they were kind of useless, except for people who were like really nerdy about it. As we go forward, I genuinely believe that you're going to have people wearing these, whether it's for medical uses or for whatever uses, police officers, military, everybody uh, will have this kind of stuff. So I, I do believe you when you say that it's going to be a gigantic industry. Um, when you look at the product as it is, and maybe as, as it is when it comes to the market, am I understanding this right, that the, the lenses are essentially displays, or is there a lens there that I can see through when not activated? Think about a conventional contact lens. What it does, it sharpens up your view of the normal world. Our lens is a little special. It provides you with that, but it also gives you incredibly good vision half an inch from your eye. Why would that be important? Well, when you throw in your cool glasses with a display inside, it sits half inch from your eye. So think of it as a, like a, a bifocal, dual focal contact lens. So if you wear the lens and no glasses, just acts like, you know, a 62% North American, 70, 80% of Asians need vision correction. So you wear a lens, it's corrected your vision in the real world. You throw on the glasses, now you've got the addition of your online, digital, virtual yeah. world and your real world. So we bring your virtual digital world to the real world, but we do it in a way that's normal glasses. 80% of us have got a pair of sunglasses. So we're all willing to wear sunglasses, but I don't know, 5%, 2% have got a VR box. And that's why we started our company, believing that this display interface, this this virtual interface, if it were normal glasses, pair of Oakleys, pair of Ray-Bans, there would be a huge take up, huge interest. And that's what we've nailed. I I think I get this. And I think many people will. Um, You mentioned sort of your background and really enjoying building companies and things like that. Talk a little bit about your background and just kind of who you are and, and get to know you a little bit. Uh, well, I'm, a, I'm an engineer by training, master's degree in elect, elect, electronics, essentially, uh, plus uh, computer graphics, computer science, plus an MBA. So bench training, uh, you know, for someone who likes to fuss with really hard problems and start companies, solve them, and essentially exit and start a new one. So I, I said five or six companies is probably a lot more. But I enjoy that process, the building process, and I enjoy things that are difficult, like looking over the horizon and say, okay, we're sitting here today and we don't have, this This is the gap, these, these large markets uh, looming. And, and if you listen to Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook or Tim Cook of Apple, they're talking about AR and wearable displays as if it's hugely important. You know, they say it changes everything. It changes how we use our technology, how we access our media. And then they stop and, and we all wait. It's like, well, where is it? Where is it? Where are these glasses? Where's the AR? And it's not there. So we recognize that. We knew something was boiling up. And today they've given it a name. They call it spatial computing. So we recognize that the market opportunity was immense, but the technology challenge was just absolutely impossible. That's why we still got a VR box on your head. Yeah. Technology channels cha- challenge is impossible. So that was uh, that was enough for us to start our company, and that's uh, that's my enthusiasm. We start by the you know the challenge of it, but then you find out that you can you can take our solution and, and take this patient group, whether it's 10 million or 100 million, and you can actually restore huge elements of their lifestyle, their independence, their well-being. And how did you do it? Well, you you basically restored their vision. So if you take, we've got our senses. And if you're lucky, they all function. Most people aren't so lucky. They've got one sense at least that's not functioning well. Vision impairment, hearing impairment, cognitive impairment, autism, memory impairment. Just if we took and approached those applications, we had we would have such an impact. So my passion started, let's do something really hard. Let's get a bunch of bunch of us together like we've done so many times and do something really hard and, and, and surprise everyone. Then it became, let's do something really impactful, really beneficial. And as we saw these patient groups that are, you know, whose needs are totally unserved, we recognize we can knock the ball out of the park for them. So that's the passion. That's what drives our company today. I love it. So people can check this out. You just go to seedinvest.com slash Innovega and check out the business. You guys had said you've raised so far about 2 million by crowdfunding. This way you're raising about 15. Um, for everyone who listens to this, you can go and check out my pitch review that I'll do on this exact company uh, coming up in the next week or so at katoon.com. 
and uh, look look out for that write up and obviously check out the page themselves. Steve, thank you so much for taking the time. Thanks, Scott. Been a privilege.